Hello and welcome to another Daily Muppet. In today's video, I want to talk about United's new approach to rebuilding the squad under the new leadership, how they've looked at it, how they've done things, and how they've moved forwards, and uh, how they will continue to move forward in the future. Um, I also want to talk about the midfield then, Brainthwaite, what that means for all the other areas of signings, left back, goalkeeper, etc. and get into every aspect of it. Uh, some news about Jaden Sancho there, um, Ugarte and Burge, and much more. So let's talk first about the aspect of Unlimited. Now, a long, long while ago in January, I put in a video to discuss this point on everybody being essentially available at this point in time. And, uh, and that really everybody was nearly everybody was available for sale if they wanted to leave. Now, this obviously pre uh, excluded a few key players that they have. And, and in the end, it really became, you know, we'd accept offers if they wanted to leave for Rashford and Bruno, but we want to keep them. And now Bruno Fernandes has a new contract, which I revealed on July 23rd that they wanted to extend it out a year. But I'll go over that in a minute, kind of why. Um, they wanted to keep Marcus Rashford. Um, they wanted to keep Lissandro Martinez. And other than that, it was mostly the young players and Diogo Dallo, you know, Kabi Menu, uh, Garnacho, uh, Rasmus Hoyland, all of that. So there, there, you looked at it and said, well, there's a lot of potential upheaval here. And the point was the approach that they took to transfers and that they've looked at the club at is not the same as the Glazers. Under the Glazers, of course, it's not the same. But we've heard in the past, to be specific, that, you know, the Glazers had a policy of a three in and three out. Something like that, Solskjaer said, and, and different things like that at certain points of time. Now, if your intention was to win the league, you would not say we're doing three and three out. Because what if you need five? Then three is knowingly not enough to win the league and to build your team, but you're doing it anyway because it's financials and you think that's what's going to get you to top four, and that's your goal. Your goal is not necessarily to do everything that it takes to win. Um, this is something Phil has talked about a lot on our podcast, and, and it comes down to the real problem with the Glazers and why you need this top-level intention in the football side of things to change more than anything else because then you will start acting as if you are actually trying to achieve what you are saying you want to achieve. So... That's why it was fairly unlimited. And the way that United have approached this window is, in a sense, fairly unlimited. It's not, we want two signings or three signings or four or five. It's we, we have a full plan for the entire squad, for everything in the team, every area that we need to figure out. And we're going to try to get as much and all of it done as we can. And obviously, we're going to have some priorities because... We need to, in certain areas, resolve some things. So when you look at kind of the squad from last year, I think this is where it's really interesting. They would have looked at it and said, okay, what are our biggest problems that we have? We have, we have a lot of problems, but what are, what are all of them? They would have started here and said, okay, young striker, Anthony Marshall leaving. So we need to make a change here because really all we have is Rasmus Hoyland. So that's why striker was an early priority, but it was a priority. They would look at the wings and say, maybe. That's why they were looking at Olise. That's why they're looking at Due and others, and they've looked at others. But they wanted to also say, what could Ahmad do here? And he got the preseason. And with that, that's why I'm not saying don't worry about who's a starter and all that. That's why, um, you know, they have still of Anthony too, but that's why we haven't really gone for a winger, and we've not, and we've had very little talk about it, even though it was something being looked at earlier. It's because they've looked and said, okay, we think with Ahmad and Garnacho and Anthony, we're probably pretty covered on that side. But what about this side? Well, we want to keep Mark Rashford, but does he want to stay? And we want to get the best out of him, so we're going to do things that will improve that. We need more depth. What's happening with Jaden Sancho? Well, we've figured it out for Jaden Sancho to stay and to be at the club. Now, if he is sold, they would they would likely replace him maybe this year, maybe next year, but they would know they need a replacement. So they figured that out, okay? They looked at the, the number 10 position and said, we want Bruno to be here, and this is why he got a new contract. 
We want him to be here and we don't want to figure this out now. This doesn't seem like a priority to us. It doesn't seem like a problem. And I think we have the players here that are good enough to take us forward. Bruno and Mount. You look at the midfield and say, we have Kavi Mainu, Eriksen, Casemiro, and McTominay. We need midfielders. But we have a serious problem here. We can't shift any of these. Financial considerations have to come into play. We have a lot of players in these positions. So we'll come back to the midfield. We look at left back and we say, okay, well, Luke Shaw's amazing when he can play. Malasia can't really play. So we need to get a left back. It's been a priority for the whole window to get a fullback who can cover the left side. So... Of course, what happens, they look to bring in Masrawi. Now, with Luke Shaw injured, they will continue to look at another short-term left back, and in the long term, an actual starting left back, because they cannot rely on Luke Shaw. In center back, what happened? Rafael Varane leaves, so all you have here is really Harry Maguire. Lindelof is, you know, running down on his last legs, and you say, yeah, that's why we need two. You have Johnny Evans in here somewhere. But we need two center backs pretty much no matter what. Um, at fullback, you would say we'd like Diogo Dalo, but with Juan Bissaka, he's leaving soon, and we don't have a player there necessarily. So this was kind of the team, right? This is kind of the team pre-signings, okay? And you would say we need a striker, and you would say we need a fullback. And you would say we need probably two center backs. And so, of course, that's what they've done. They've moved this ahead and they've said, all right, um, we got Lenny Oro in the door. We got our priority signing here. We got Delict in the door as well. So that makes a huge difference. This can push, you know, McGuire to the backup and we can move on Lindelof. Um, and here we got Masrawi. Um we still need a left back, very likely, and that's why that is still a priority and something they're looking at. Because Masrawi can cover it, but then you're drawing from coverage over here. You need someone here. Malasia is not fit, not ready yet. Honestly, it's probably... I mean, we'll, we'll leave it as Luke Shaw, but right now all you have is, is you have Masrawi, so you have a double cover problem here. And um, again, in the long term, they're going to want to fix that too. The reason I mention all of this is that there's no limit to how many transfers we can do. We've we've pretty much we've we've not totally solved the center back, but we've solved some problems. We signed Joshua Xerxes. So now Xerxes will be in here. We've solved the striker. They feel that the wingers are probably good enough as it stands. It's something they may address later depending on the development of the players, but they'll look at it and say we probably have enough here. We're finishing the team. We've got enough at striker. We've got enough here. We've got enough here. If someone departs, we may look to another forward, but it's probably next season, and it's going to be based on performances, right? All of this is not to say for sure, but based on the current team, they can. it's good to where they will be able to look at the performances and decide if there's more needed. Same here. So what else is there? We need at least two midfielders, Okay. And so, of course, they're going to look to Ugarte. They're going to look to Sander Burge, at least one, to get in here and push Casemiro down, potentially move on McTominay, and then next summer look to another top midfielder to get into this team and then add Toby Collier to that. So there's two more players, three more potentially there, another left back, another center back. All of those things are needs between now, January, and next summer. Two to three midfielders, another center back, and a left back. Those are all needs, regardless of things. Now, based on performances, they might find others, but those are all needs. They won't stop this summer if they can get the players that they want in those positions and they can financially swing it. So my point is, is that if there was a sale of Casemiro, of McTominay, they got Ugarte at a good value, they got Burge at a good value, if they could get his left back in, if Brainswade's price came down, if Maguire's was able to be sold, they would do every piece of business possible. But that's going to tell us what they're going to be aiming for for next year. Whatever they don't get done, they're going to be looking to do next season. So we already know because the goal is to finish the team, not to just get a couple of transfers. The goal is to finish the team and we know what the priorities are. That being said, in accomplishing this, there's one factor that is important. Just because there's a hole in the team, 
this kind of fits a, a, an only quote, but not quite when he said he'd rather have a hole than an asshole in the team. It's quite different. It's a little different than that, but the point is, is almost the same. They'd rather not sign someone if it's not a player they like at the valuation they want, because that's how you end up with these problems like we have in the midfield where you're bloated with players that you need to move on but can't. And that is holding you up from financially being able to make the signings that you want in those positions. So it's just a different approach to things if they could get Ugarte on a good value. And I'll, I'll go through all the names of what we mean now, but if they could get all these players on different values that at the value that they see for them, then they would continue and keep signing and keep signing and keep signing and keep selling and doing everything that they can within their financial means. So there's no, there's no limit. It also means there's no bottom, okay? I, you know, you've seen this with City, Liverpool, uh, Madrid, even over the years, that sometimes they just don't really sign a lot of players because they want to only get the ones that they value to finish the squad. If you do it right, if you look at the ages and the people we're signing, if you could get two midfielders in and a left back and a center back between this summer and next, you don't have an obvious need for a signing at that point in time. If there's a top player at the right value, you will sign them in a position where maybe someone's underperforming. But there's not an obvious need. And that's where we want to be, to where we sign players at the best players at a value we want, and there's no obvious needs. And it's as players age or as if there's an injury or if somebody, you know, just becomes uh, underperforming or asks to go or doesn't sign a new deal, then we can make changes. So a different approach. No, uh, the bottom is zero because they're not going to sign players for the sake of it, but the top end is much, much higher. And we've seen that this summer where we've gotten four real signings in and we could still go for more. Five, six signings, potentially, maybe even more. I'm not saying we will. There's only a couple weeks left, but but we could. Um, the other factor, when you look at it overall and you look at the finances of what they've done, they've done all of this, 164 million euros in, out, and out 60, 100 million euros, okay, is what they've accomplished with these sales. They've gotten them at the good values. So... We could spend, I mean, the amount we've done on a less than our normal month yearly spending is incredible in terms of a net. And there still could be more for sure with McTominay, with Lindelof, with those in terms of uh, raising funds. But let's talk about Jared Braithwaite because obviously there's been talk of United still being interested in him. I've mentioned it. There's been discussions about it. It could go on. They are as part of this sort of unlimited nature. Of course, they still want Braithwaite. But again, has to be at the right price. They would need to sell center backs to do this though. Lindelof, they're still moving, working on, but they would need to sell likely as well Harry Maguire. If Everton were interested in him and there was a good valuation on both sides, then that could make it open. If someone else came in, it doesn't have to be Everton, but if there was somebody else who was interested in him and they came to the, a good valuation on Braintwaite, then that could still happen. Um, otherwise, next season, maybe they move Maguire then and get Braintwaite in. But that's sort of the point that they're looking at there's no necessarily active discussions but i wouldn't be surprised to have them say because there's interest in mcguire i wouldn't even though mcguire is likely to stay like this is again not necessarily likely but the point is it's about taking each step forward um and uh and, and seeing what you can do so you know they'll they'll look at that and say well could we make another offer for Braintwaite if it's at a good fee if we feel we could also sell mcguire yeah that could all be done in tandem Low chances, but it could happen, and it's still something they're they're open to doing. Um, on Burge and Ugarte, I continue to be told that the interest in Sander Burge is legitimate, that the talks are ongoing, that the, there is it is believed that the interest in him is, is quite real. Um, but it is also in Ugarte. It is also in Ugarte. And uh, I believe that there are alternatives right now because I think they'd want to get one now and um, perhaps a, a bigger player next summer. We've talked about that, like the pie in the sky of Adam Wharton type of player next year. Um, but the interest is is legitimate. They're progressing in, in discussions. They're talking on Ugarte. They're talking on Burge. Um, selling McTominay wouldn't necessarily mean they buy two. It's just that it would help the financials overall to get the midfielder in, but also may help further spending in the other areas for all these other priorities that they want to address too. In, in finishing the team out. So 
Um, Ugarte, they're still haven't yet got anything from PSG saying for sure. Yeah, the price will come down. Uh, there's some interesting conflicting reports on Jaden Sancho and how interested PSG would be in him. It wouldn't be a swap deal either way, very likely. But uh, they've also just signed Desiree Due. Now they need to sell. Enrique has left uh, Ugarte out of training. They're, they're going to have to come down in the price. They have a couple weeks left. They have very little um, leverage in this situation. And so I think there's there's still a lot of belief around there that United could get Ugarte in. Um, but it's about PSG because they just won't pay that $60 million. That's sort of the point. Even though they have these needs, they're only going to pay the valuations that they like closer to maybe 40 plus 10 or 45 plus 5. Very, very similar to Delict. But they're actively progressing on Sander Burge as well and think that that could be an interesting opportunity, one to very much keep an eye on. If they cannot get Ugarte, I really wouldn't be surprised if we get Sander Burge. Um, as I've said before, I've not heard much on Fofana. There's reports today further pushing him towards Mil towards Milan. I've never had anything to indicate United were on the verge of signing him. That's just from, from my side of it. Uh, we've talked about Zuba Mendy rejecting Liverpool, but United looked at that but didn't really get anywhere with it. Um, I don't know of any other significant ones. You have Amrabat in the, in the background there. Uh, Toby Collier could make up the numbers, but you're going to need to sign someone anyway is the view. So um, that's what's kind of happening on that front. It's still progressing. They're still in talks. I, I think it's going to be one of the two, and I think they'll get one. I'm, I'm pretty sure they're going to get one. That's what I would think. They want one. Uh, they want to get at least one of those players in for sure. So I hope that they do, and I think that they can. Um, again, they're willing to do as much as possible based on the on the um, the valuations. Uh, one last thing on Burge, you know, I mentioned before Burnley were looking at somewhere in the range of thirty million. United won't want to do that, but um, there's still deals and things being discussed that could potentially make this work. Um, on the left back side, as I've said before, they're looking at left backs. They're looking at left backs. They're looking at probably a cheap option. I don't believe they feel they're going to be able to afford one. They really did want to give Luke Shaw this season to see if he could get back into shape. The fact that he's out for six weeks is frustrating, but it may be a little late for them to be decided on buying a top young left back, but they're very interested in, in you know, in Kirkus, in Ait Nuri, as I've mentioned, uh, in terms of the long term, but I think those are going to be potentially next summer deals so that they can prioritize these other areas. They may look again at like a Gutierrez has been discussed in media and such of quite a bit, but I think that's going to be next year. Um, I think that's going to be next year and uh, so that they can see how it goes and, and in the short term prioritize somebody else. There's There's been talk of different ones. I've heard of Chilwell, Kukurea. There's been talk of Marcus Alonso. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it's any of those, frankly, um, at this point in time. Um, um, let's see. So, yeah, they're still looking there. Someone for coverage. See how Mal if Malasia can come back. See if Shaw can actually get fit and play over the course of the season. And then decide um, next year. So, that's left back. On the sales front... They're still looking at potential movements for uh, a number of, of players, especially young players. Palistri and Hannibal um, could definitely go. Um, there's interest in both of them. They'd be looking for similar deals to what they got on Kambwala and Alvaro Fernandez. That might be a little bit difficult, but uh, they'd want to get similar, get some profit on those players and, uh, and, and see how it goes. And uh, ideally, they would move them on that that's just where it is now and they're still in talks over it it's a bit trickier they've needed them a bit as well to help make up the numbers in preseason but uh yeah obviously as we get into the season they're they're not really going to see the pitch there collier is likely to stay amas is likely to stay potentially make up some minutes um if we were to sign two midfielders i think collier would go if we sign one it's going to be really limited in the amount that he plays so potentially alone but they still like to see if he can show something at, some, at certain points um as i've said before mctominay they're very open to selling him it's really going to depend on who comes in for an offer there was talks with napoli uh, apparently that united turned down a loan move according to demarcio um he's open to a move abroad he's open to a move to a big club uh, United probably won't accept a loan. They want to get paid for him so that they can they can move things on. 
Uh, Lindelof is not really in the plans at this point, barring injuries, and could definitely be sold. There's Italy, there's Turkey, etc. I think Italy is still, again, the most likely there. Um, so they're still working on on all of that. And, and, and that will help see how far we can take things. If you sold Lindelof and McTominay, financially it opens a number of doors as well, and especially depending on what happens in the midfield. So... Very active talks ongoing for Burge and Ugarte United, keeping their eyes on the Braintweight situation, looking at chief left backs, talking about sales right now, but for the most part, the squad is shaping up. The long-term priorities continue to be two midfielders, a left back, a center back. And, um, and then see how it goes with all the wingers and the forwards over the course of the season. So that's we'll see how much more they can get done this summer. And then we will kind of know already where we're planning for next summer. And I'll be interested to see the names that start to come up um, after the window. I mean, it's starting scouts and the work gets done next year. And some of the names we're seeing this summer might be the names we see next summer. Okay. Uh, obviously, there'll be new ones and more. And there'll be more time for preparation. But I wouldn't be surprised if we don't get them this summer that they become next summer's pursuit because it's a, it's a steady, direct plan overall. That's what I've got for today. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn notifications on. I will see you in the next one.